Now, let's take a look at this in the Responsinator, because the last thing we're going to do here is actually make this stuff work properly in a responsive context. Because if you refresh your the Responsinator, you're going to see it doesn't actually work. Now, in the first place, the menu, now you can't see any border, right? So I want it, I want the border to have a menu. I mean, I want the menu to have that dark border back. In the second place, this wants to change its width. And in the third place, you can see what's happening here. That, that background image that we're using for our sidebar is actually filling the whole background space in some of these smaller views, and then is kind of doing half and half. So we need to remove that background image from that case, from the, from the mobile device case. Okay, and we're going to do that using media queries. Now I have a whole, uh, I have a whole tutorial on media queries in the class on how to create a custom responsive skin for Thesis 2. And if you don't know what a media query is, you're going to want to go and watch that before you attempt this. However, I've given you four sample media queries to use in order to make adjustments. This first one is the one that we're going to use, which is which is one that essentially says do this code in every device except for the smaller mobile devices. In other words, show this only to the desktop view. That's what this media query does. The second media query is show it only in larger mobile views. Third media, which is, this is, this is the same media query Thesis 2.1 uses. These next three are, are Thesis Classic Responsive Media Queries that I've pulled out for your use. But I'm, this is the opposite one, and it's the one that says, you know, show it only in the desktop view. Because what we're going to do is make some changes. And we always put media queries at the end. And a media query has an opening and closing curly bracket that wraps the rules. Okay? So um, each rule has its own opening and closing bracket as well. But inside this media query, we are going to say that we want the, the border color to go back to that um, back to that main border color and well, that's the first thing we're going to do and the second thing we're, oh and the second thing we're going to do is get rid of this background image in that case so we're going to come back up here and take this rule that says this one here we're going to take this rule out and put it inside that media query so that it will only happen in desktop views. Okay, and it's good practice to indent, so I'm going to select that stuff and click Tab to indent it all in. So now what this media query says is that in a desktop view, give columns this background image. Okay, and we're going to save the custom CSS and that's actually going to solve our biggest problem because now we've got we're back to our nice white color we don't have that blue background I like this I'm leaving this blue background here because uh, the bottom background because it looks pretty cool in these other devices right you can tell that there's something else going on and then you get to the wider phone and the whole thing shows up so I think it looks pretty neat. But the other thing we want to do is get that is get uh, borders back in here. And so in this case, the way to do that is to come back over to our menu menu a border color and cut that out and put that in here as well. So that and we'll just tab that over so it's indented properly. So we've got our opening and closing bracket for the media query. And then this rule has an opening and closing bracket. And so now what's going to happen is on the desktop view, the border is going to be this color. And then all the rest of the views, it's going to be the regular color. So we save that. Come back over here to the Responsinator and refresh it. 
If you click the menu, now you see those borders show up. But if you come over here to Barking Chihuahua in the main view, none of that stuff, well, none of that stuff has changed, right? It looks exactly the way it did before we added the media query. But now with the media query, it changes up so it looks right um, in that media. Now, there's one last thing I want to do. And that is, I want to I want to set a maximum width of this thing to 100% of its container because what we've got up right now here is that when we're at this point right here, it's set to be 300 pixels wide, but um, but we don't have 300 pixels room for it, so I want to make it just I want to make its maximum width. 100% of the space available to it rather than a fixed width of 300 pixels. So I'm going to do that by by coming over here to our uh, coming over here to our custom CSS and then I have to select the element that is controlling its width. And the element that's controlling its width is this div ID AF header, not AF header, pardon me, AF form. That's what's controlling its width, this div ID AF form 194, whatever. So I'm just going to copy that and then go write my rule, which is, um, which is pound sign that and then max width colon 100%. So it's either going to be 300 pixels wide or 100% wide, whichever is less. Okay, max width of 100%. Save that. Did I say, yeah, we'll refresh it. See, it didn't change anything here. But if we come over to this and refresh this, now it fits properly inside the inside the mobile browser window. So you can see why I'm saying that in order to use the thesis skin editor with uh, uh, with classic responsive and in order for all your stuff to stay responsive, you do need to learn a little bit about responsive design.